How you doing everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now some of you guys may already have a home theater room and some that are just starting out you can take some notes and do it right the first time. In this video I'll be talking about five ways to make your home theater even better. I've been to so many of my friends home theaters where if they tweak a few things their complete experience will be so much more immersive. Now I must warn you though some of these suggestions could cost you some money, some won't. It's up to you how many of these you can take on board, but you just can't go wrong if you follow these guidelines and do it as many as possible. Now, this is one of the most important guides to undertake in order to have a great sounding home theater. Putting your front left and right speaker channels right next to the wall facing straight forward can sound a little meh. Adjust these by tilting them towards the center of the room, near the center seating position and recalibrate the system and you'll see the major change in how effective something this small can be. And of course make sure your center channel is also centered and close to ear level height if can or a little lower depending on if it's in a living room or a dedicated home theater room and your furnishing, I guess, also. For your surround speakers, some people make the mistake of facing them directly at their heads or towards the middle of the room, which is definitely a no-no. For a more diffuse sound, best thing to do is to point them directly at each other, which allows the sound to come from behind you or not distract you from the on-screen action. Number two is the center channel. Now I think the center channel is the most important speaker in the room and I know so many people that just use an average speaker as a center channel and it just makes me furious. If you're going to use some crappy old speaker you might as well not use a center channel at all and get your left and your right channels to try use those signals instead. Get yourself a decent center channel speaker and I promise you you will be blown away on how effective the audio will be, not to mention the whole experience of watching a movie. Number three is setting your main speaker to small. I'm sure most of you guys have a subwoofer or want to buy a system with one, so let it do its job. This was one of my mistakes as an early home enthusiast. I always thought I have a big front channel speakers, so therefore I'll set it to large. No, if you're doing that, all the bass that the sub should be doing, you're allowing your speakers to do the hard work and that gets the sub a little bit confused. It is doubtful that you have a main speaker that go below 40 to 50 hertz. By setting it to large also means anything below the frequency response of those speakers is going to be lost, never to be seen again. So long, bye bye. <laughs> If you want great sound speakers, make sure you set them to small and every other speaker for that matter and let your sub get everything below the crossover point which is 80 hertz. Moving on to number four, adjust your lighting and shades. Now in a dedicated home theater room, I truly believe the room should be pitch black, meaning completely closed curtains or blinds or else tiniest little light shining through can throw you off. Yes, you have high-tech projectors now that do well even with the lights on, but they do cost a lot more money. Living room TV, you don't have to worry about anything with lighting. But in dedicated home theater room, figuring out a good way to dim the lights and enhance the shades will dramatically increase your movie experience. Just imagine you go to the movies and they had some form of lighting turned on. No, thank you. I know some of you guys and some of my friends even watch a movie while they have some sort of RGB lighting in the background behind the screen or behind the TV. How unenjoyable is it? I don't know if some of you guys have it or had that experience, but it's just terrible. We all know displays look brighter and more vibrant in a dark environment. Step lights or any sort of money important features can be acceptable, but anything else is a big no-no. Painting the front wall where the screen goes, a flat light absorbing dark gray will help reduce any light that's bouncing around the room from bouncing back at the viewer. Before we move on to the next one, 
I've seen some of you guys also put picture frames right near the screen which can also bounce light and be distracting everyone in their own of course for immersive experience you'd want to make some arrangements possibly put them as far away from the screen as you can so the conclusion is make sure lighting and shading are on point last but not least invest in a universal controller all of us experienced home theater enthusiasts i'm sure have some form of universal controllers now it can be either a display control like an ipad or a semi-digital controller like the Logitech Harmin Elite. Smart devices are known to make our lives a lot easier and convenient, so use it. In a theatre room, universal controller is definitely a must for me, but if you have a normal room without any sort of tech and running a basic setup, I don't see the need for one, especially when they are very, very costly. I personally love this controller and the tap of a button everything in this room happens, which is another video which I will need to make for you guys. But activating lights such as the step lights, down lights, LED strip lights, the projector and all the gear like the receiver, 4K player, amplifier, the cooling fans, etc. All come together and being in one controller, that's just magic. And it's super cool, especially when you can program a lot more devices than just your home theater tech. And just as a backup, because I'm a huge fan of voice recognition, I've got the Google Assistant to help out, which is awesome. I can go downstairs and say things like, hey G, turn on the theater and everything in this room will turn on by the time I get my drinks and snacks ready. That's one other thing to think about for you guys if you haven't got one already. Conclusion to all of these, with hard work you paid for your home theater. These are just some tips to help you take control over your investment. Once you make these little improvements, I guarantee you, you won't regret it. The goal is to create a space for you and your family will enjoy, in which both the decor and the electronics work together. Sometimes that means a little compromise or two, but the results will be definitely worth it. Let me know what you guys think of these suggestions by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, hit that button and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.